of eight. I remember we, we've been uh, had four and five games. Now we've got eight this week. Could have had the whole lot. Brighton versus Villa. Brighton at minus 120. I was so close to going with Brighton. Uh, Villa at plus 320. I'm not having Villa, and I'm certainly not having that man underneath the uh, Villa title there. <laughs> um, over two and a half at plus 100. I think this could get out of hand, this game. Um, draw is at plus 280. Brighton to score twice is at minus 105. I think they're going to need to score twice to, to win the game. But Mark O'Hare, under new management, they seem to enjoy going on the front foot and they, they seem to enjoy creating chances and they're putting them away, home and away. Yeah, I'm really enjoying Brighton at the minute, um, playing in a very similar style or very much the same characteristics as Roberto De Zerbi's Sassuolo side, who um, anyone who follows Serie A during that time will know very much goal-heavy games involved when Sassuolo were playing. They're pressing higher, they're moving the ball quicker uh, towards goal, they're being much more expansive and adventurous than they were under Graham Potter, and you can see it in the raw numbers, really. They've played seven games under Zerbi, they've scored at least three goals in three of them, and they've conceded twice more in four of them as well. So they've got back-to-back -back wins, they battered uh, Chelsea here not long ago, but um, you just look at the, the the underlying numbers of their, their victory against Wolves last weekend, 12 players had a shot at goal, and the only exceptions were Billy Gilmore, who came on in the 82nd minute, and Joel Veltmund, who came on in stoppage time. Seven of the 12 players to have a shot hit the target, and numerous of them created chances as well. So they're humming at the minute. They're playing really good football. Um, so, yeah, very like the idea of, of Brighton. I think minus 120 is fair enough. It always comes down to the idea of do they have enough quality to finish those opportunities. But I'm going to back them to at least get one. Um, I think this match against Villa could be quite fun, could be quite entertaining, because... Um, I think the markets can take a while to, to adjust to new head coaches and, and sort of new uh, tactical intricacies, if you like. And uh, that's certainly the case with Brighton because, you know, if you ever got minus 120 uh, on a Sassuolo game for BTTS, you'd absolutely snap it up. So to get yeah. that here this weekend against Aston Villa does appeal to me. I know Villa are winless on the road. They've lost five or seven away. Only Forrest have scored fewer goals. But this is Unai Emery's first game away from home. And, and look, that is a, a small caveat to this game is, you know, Emery as an away underdog, particularly after getting such a great start. He could opt to, be, opt to be quite pragmatic here. But I just think the way in which he set his team up last week, 4-2-2-2, which often became a 4-2-3-1. We had Jacob Ramsey marauding around the central areas, a box-to-box -box role. Wendia looking free as a bird, really. Um, without Coutinho around. And I think Villa can absolutely make their mark on this match too. And, and Brighton have kept just one clean sheet since August. So, you know, I think Villa are buzzing after that win against United. I think Brighton are absolutely buzzing after their recent performances too. So I don't see any reason why either of these two teams would try and hold back, you know, the last game before the, the World Cup break. So expecting a, an end-to-end -end game, expecting Brighton and Villa to get on the score sheet. BTTS around minus 120 looks a really nice play for me. I know you opened up the show by saying you could have had seven, eight, maybe nine bets. You found this week was pretty uh, pretty enticing. I've just added another. I've gone with over two and a half goals here in the game at plus 100. I'm really, I'm going to have like six units on this uh, card stinch. But the over two and a half definitely brings in the three nil. But Villa could score three as well. And we could be looking at like over two and a half before half time. I'm not even looking for both teams to score an over to get my plus 100. Yeah, I think it could be a clash of styles, as, as Mark is sort of, I think, alluding to. You've got De Zerbi who wants to play open, expansive football. You've got Unai Emery, who is uh, a master tactician as, as the underdog. So it, it could be really fascinating in, in that aspect. We've only got one Villa game to go off, which was the, Mark was kind of painting the picture of how they set up against United last weekend. We've only got seven Premier League Brighton games for De Zerbi to work off and and we're not quite sure probably who will play up front as well for Brighton. So I think there's a lot of question marks surrounding surrounding this game. So I do think if you um, you know if there is a price that you like and you you, you do think after you factor all of these what ifs in, you do you do still think it's too big, then definitely I would uh, go ahead and take it. I just thought that this Brighton price, I mean, I, I wrote down a few weeks ago, any team with Danny Welbeck up front, no, no, zero goals in the league this season, one goal, which was a penalty in the, the League Cup during this week. Any team, I think, with him him up front or in a, even coming off the bench, you, you just can't trust to convert some of these chances. They sign like a, you know, a top eight striker in the January transfer window. I really think they could push for top six and maybe even top four, um, such as 
how wide open the, the league is this season. But for now, I just think minus 120 is too short for a game where I think Unai Emery will just instruct his players to be tight, compact. Mark's mentioned that sort of 2-2 in midfield as well. So Brighton will expect to try, probably have to go around the outside to try and pick them off. And, and look, Brighton play with that wing-back system. So they, they've, they, they've got every opportunity that they could do that. But I just think that Villa will be will set up to be very deep and very compact. And I think it could be a case of just attack via defence. So I just thought Brighton at minus 120 was too short. So I'm kind of putting my faith a little bit in Unai Emery by opposing Brighton. You know, Villa have been very, very poor for away, away from home. Brighton unbeaten in nine of the, the last ten. But actually, they've only won two of the last seven under deserving. And listen, they create a lot of good chances, but ultimately they don't always finish those. So, yeah, I'm taking a bit of a risk here, but I just think that minus 120 on Brighton is too short. I regretted recently when they played Forest at home. I think Brighton were about, around about minus 250. It finished nil-nil. Yes, they deserve to win, but betting's all about price. And I just think Brighton are being chalked up a little bit short at the moment. And let's not forget that we've been talking nearly all season about um, the market overrating Villa. So I'm surprised to see Villa as big as they are. And I do think you have to respect the market. You know, they ultimately, they are the ones moving the prices. Yeah, there's, uh, there's many to look at here. But I think to myself that the new manager coming in at Brighton has really suited their players. They can play with a false nine, even if it is well back, he can drift out because they all want to run forward. They all want to pass forward and they have pace and energy. Um, I'm just happy with the over two and a half at plus 100 because... I'm hoping that Unai Emery actually gives a reward to them players that played on the front foot last week. They play again. This is one of those where they're not tracking. It's just an end-to-end basketball game. And if you are on the plus 100 over two and a half, yeah, you could get the Villa win at 3-2 or 2-1, at plus 100 double chance. But the over two and a half brings in Brighton scoring three on their own. Yeah, um, I think it's a no-brainer. If you want to be brave, you can go both teams to score an over as well. Really entertaining games in the Premier League this week, and this is no exception. Brighton versus Villa. Not household names, but I think they're going to put on a show. So uh, let's have a little look at the official picks. So I added, OK, uh, over two and a half goals at plus 100. Both teams to score at minus 125. Don't see it being 1-1, one, one, though, but I do think uh, no one's keeping clean sheets. And Villa double chance at plus 0.5 at plus 100. So uh, full house again on selections in that game. 